hello, good evening. Hello, good evening and welcome. Here we go again. Where on earth have the weeks gone? What an extraordinary thing. It's, I don't know for everybody else, it's going faster and faster and faster. Anyway, we are here live at Hello Mag. I'm Gabby Roslin and welcome to Hello Let's Gab. I am sure what week this is. Is this week five, week six? But thank you so much for tuning in every week and thank you so much for your lovely, lovely comments. Now, tonight on the show, we've got Ollie Locke. Now, he calls me his TV mum. He's my TV son. He's just divine. And his fiance, Gareth Locke. So we're going to be chatting to them first. Then we're going to be going to the puppet that is, the wonderful Angela Griffin. I mean, she's so busy. So we're going to be chatting to her about three different things. Of course, she was on last night and Isolation Stories on ITV. She's also talking about White Lines on Netflix, which uh, launches next week, which is dropped next week. And also Done Breeding, which you can see on YouTube. And then, of course, as usual, we go to the wonderful Melissa Hemsley for our Friday night snack attack. So anyway, I hope you've all had a good week. I hope you're all well. Um, to everybody today, uh, VE Day. Um, my grandfather fought in World War II. Uh, he was on um, the uh, ships that uh, the search for bombs in the sea. So uh, I, just my love and thoughts to everybody today on what a day it's been. And of course, at nine o'clock, uh, we'll be tuning in for the Queen. And Hello Magazine uh, will, of course, be covering that. And I've just seen the footage they put out of Prince Charles as well uh, with the Lone Piper. That was incredibly beautiful so what a day a day to remember and i salute all of our incredible men and women who fought for us to let us be able to be free so now let's have a look if ollie and gareth are there there he is i absolutely adore ollie i really do um i have in the nicest possible way excuse me <clears throat> the biggest crush on ollie he doesn't mind yeah hello hello oh, Look at you both! I, I've just looked at ourselves. I've realised we look like kind of we're in the, the judging panel in kind of in judges' houses. Do you know? No, I, I, I love it. I absolutely love Are you in the garden? We're on our roof terrace in Fulham. Okay, can we have a look at a bit of the view, the, the rooftops of London? You actually can. You actually can. How do you flip it? Here we go. So. Oh wow! Fabulous. So we we do actually have quite a, a huge view of of London and you've got Fulham Football Club over there and then you've got Chelsea Football over, over there, club over there. And in the middle somewhere, you've got the London Eye, you can actually see. You realise so, we can see uh, Palace Westminster. There, and we can see the Palace of Westminster first. I've lived here for five years, just realised that we can see Westminster. And St Paul's, the, the top so, square of St Paul's. Oh, how amazing. <laughs> if you how <laughs> amazing. So you two, look at you two lovebirds. Oh. <laughs> um, so last time I saw you, you weren't engaged yet, were you? I don't think we were. Or we we'll, would we'll be, we're just going to get, I can't remember. No, 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 because no, no, it was Van Dyne. B yes, BBC, uh, it was uh, BBC London, wasn't Ooh. it? Yes, it was. Uh, and I was yeah, so, we were, we were, we were. so thrilled for you two. So how are all the wedding plans going? So that's kind of, sadly, it was meant to be, we were all planning everything that was meant to be in November. And yet we're still not sure whether it's acceptable to be able to do it then or not. We're not quite sure. So, uh, but the issue is, is if they say everything in August, oh, it's all fine, no problem at all, carry on. Then we go, well, we've got three months to organise a 250 people wedding. Um, so that's not the easiest thing in the world. When yeah, most it is with out. you. You're, you're good, or you're the sort of person <laughs> who go, I know, let's do it now, let's do it right here. So yes. He's, wi he's wildly impatient. He's actually, he's, I'm, I'm also the same. That's probably why we work so well. Well, you know you and your hubby are very much on the, on the list. Well, that's very and kind you've got of a you. fabulous table. You're with Harriet Thorpe and Gok and you've got oh, Alan. Alan's oh. coming as well. Car. So, you, surely you've got, you must have it a bit planned because this has been going on a while. So you must know vaguely what you're going to be doing. We, we, we do know where we're going to be doing it. We're very fortunate we've got a fabulous wedding planner called Rosie. Um, who is a real like massive help and knows her onions and comes highly recommended. So she sort of takes a lot of the weight off us. Um, we've got it all, it's all sort of down on paper. We've got the venue booked. The guest list is, is pretty sorted. 
Now, well, everybody wants, by the way, I know that Hello Magazine want to cover this. Just so I'm just saying, yeah. I know that they want yeah, to cover yeah. it. Be very glamorous. Um, but uh, for guest list wise, everybody's obsessed to know whether or not you're inviting all of the Made in Chelsea people. Look at Gareth looking down. He knew yeah, what I was funny, about to say. I did do an interview recently and I kind of chucked a couple of names out there and suddenly people have gone, okay, well, he's, he's ousted a load of people. Well, well there, there was, there, it suddenly came out and um, there was a couple of articles after we did this um, interview the other day and um, was like, oh, look who's snubbed from coming to the wedding and who, who's going and who isn't. And actually, we, we forgot to mention some people who are coming. And then, yeah, certainly there are some people who aren't. Yeah. But again, what I would, everyone always says to me when it comes to Maiden Chelsea, they always say, do you get along with everyone on the show? And I say, do you get along with everyone in your office? It's exactly the mm. same situation. Yeah. Some people, no, I don't like very much. Some people I don't like now. Some people I haven't liked in the future, in the past even. So it's, it, I, 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 I I'll carry on. But some people are fabulously lovely friends. So you have to... Yeah, just work it out. Otherwise, the reality show wouldn't work if everyone loved each other, I suppose. I think also it's because we all move in like lots of different friends groups as well. So there's like a few different sections to it. Yeah. So it's, it's not that we don't like people. It's that we just don't really socialise. Well, sometimes I don't like them. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm aware laughs> that. That's why I'm here because you say it as it is, Ollie. I imagine that Gareth, you're the, the, the mediator. The, the I'm, one that I'm, says... I, 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 I can be quite straightforward, but I'm, I'm, I'm being pragmatic, I think. I'm being yeah. fair. Yeah. I'm trying to be fair. <laughs> So have you got, have you got, are you going to be doing uh, regular vows? Have you got poems that you've chosen? Well, how are you going to be doing it? Are you going to give anything away? Well, the, there is a poem that I have chosen that I really want. I was very lucky to do a film last year with Stephen Fry. I know, we were going to and, get there, yes. You we, movie star. Uh, well, well, yes. Anyway, so Stephen, I, I remember we were filming in Greece for a while and I kind of slapped my arm like that and I went, mosquitoes are everywhere. And he went, Mosquito by D.H. Lawrence. <laughs> and I went, I don't know that at all. And he recited a D.H. Lawrence poem to us almost completely off by hand. I mean, he looked at it slightly, but, but said it in the most fabulous Stephen Fry way for about 15 minutes and had our entire, and suddenly everyone just kind of crowded round and he had this entire kind of Greek amphitheatre, if you will, of, of people watching. And it was just fabulous. And, and from that day on, I went, that's special. That's a really special, but in beautiful Greek, filming my first film, my first major, major picture with Stephen Fry. And I was like, well, that's quite special. So I kind of got that red, but it is a bit dark. There's, there's, a, there's a funny story why mosquitoes there about the wedding. Because originally we were thinking about getting married in Italy. Yeah. Um, and fortunately we didn't because otherwise it would have been September this year and it obviously would not be possible at all. Yeah. Um, but one of Ollie's biggest gripes, because we were talking about August or September, the reason to have it in September was because of the mosquitoes. And like, I, like we, we'll, go to bed, <laughs> we'll go to bed at night in the summer and Ollie will be up for an hour more than me hunting around the room to try and squash a, a mosquito that is basically, that is he, his, his sort of absolute hate for mosquitoes is something that was a big driver behind our wedding planning. So <laughs> hence, hence so, why okay. there's, a sort of, um, there's a sort of a tenuous link to the poem mm. to our wedding. That's, but it's bizarre. <laughs> so he hates mosquitoes, but he wants to do a poem about mosquitoes at his wedding to the man that if, he loves. If, if, if you haven't heard it before, <laughs> it is the most amazing poem. And it's, it's about... Um, it's about someone that hates mosquitoes. Yeah. But it's so not about love. But I kind of want people to sit there and be like, this is extraordinary. Oh, nothing to do with this love. is very strange. You're talking about chasing a mosquito around a room. And it's, it's, but it's, it's very beautiful. And when Stephen does, it's especially beautiful. <laughs> You'll have to get him to do it at your wedding then. I'm sure, well, I mean, I, I, yes. I have seen him once, actually, I've seen, since that. We have seen each other once, and he was wonderful, as always. Oh, he is a wonderful person. What was it like doing the film? Because, of course, years ago, you did train. That's what you wanted to do. You wanted to be an actor. Um, how was it doing a movie? Well, it, it was lovely because it kind of, it, it, the, the movie was a kind of very British film by Michael Winterbottom about a kind of retail magnet, but was not a very nice man, really. And, um, and it was Isla Fisher and Steve Coogan and David Mitchell and Stephen Fry and Sarah Soleimani, loads of incredible, incredible people. And with kind of cameos from people like, um, oh, uh, Kira Knightley and Colin Firth and Ben Stiller. And so it was mad. So that was fabulous. So we spent a long time out there. And I remembered that actually, as soon as I finished filming that, I went, I'm going to take some time off Made in Chelsea and I'm going to work on acting again because that's why I, I want to. And when I did go back to Made in Chelsea, I made an agreement in my contract that I can still do whatever acting roles I'm allowed, like, that come up. So and? I'm still going. And so, well, sadly, just got down to the last two in a Vanessa Hudgens movie. Um, oh, and so no. just lost out on that. But we're still auditioning at the moment. We're not we're doing not so many. But, but um, yeah, we're, we're carrying on. I get lots of uh, American auditions, which is great. So. And what, for, with an English accent, off to be American? 
No, English accent. It's always the, uh, it's always the slightly camp best friend, which is the role I absolutely, it's Rupert Everett, my best friend's wedding is my number one part. I would always want to, a, a re oh. revamp of that. Yes, yes. So that. they'll do it. How about a musical version of that? Can you sing? That I can actually sing a little bit, yeah. We'll, we, we'll work it. <laughs> can Thanks you? very much. Can you? Thank you. Well, very no, he's a very good singer. I'm all right. Gareth might not quite agree. You should have seen what he was doing behind you. Uh, yeah. Gareth, how about you? What are you up to at the moment? What am I up to? Uh, well, I started doing Charles C since we went back in... We, we started filming in January, came out yeah. in March. Uh, doing that, which is obviously a very interesting new sort of thing to be a part of. Um, and then also like my, my, my sort of background, I work in fashion, so yeah. sort of executive, all very boring sort of financial side of things. So I work at the moment sort of fitting with Ollie's lifestyle in consultancy. So um, I work like an interim managing director for a few companies. Well, that's so, actually not, not at the moment. Uh, but at the moment, fashion has taken such a huge turn because of coronavirus. And uh, I mean, uh, most of people involved in fashion, I mean, the big stores from the very small boutiques, you know that it's very, very, very tough. And they're saying that trends very possibly might go and uh, that everybody's looking at fashion in a different way. Have you found that from the business side? I, the thing is, there, there is a sort of, um, as, as progression happens with sort of um, the economy and in terms of what's happening in terms of high street retail and rent being very expensive, rates being very expensive, that it, companies and stores that are heavily based, like Debenhams are, in high street retail are sort of unagile beasts which are on a sort of trajectory to either have to do drastically change or fail. So mm. a lot of the companies that I work with is a, sort of the structure of doing that I do is like in future proofing. So um, we base a lot of things on online <laughs> and stuff like that. It's, it's all very like complicated. Yeah. But uh, it's it, essentially what it's doing is forcing the retail industry into something which was inevitably going to happen and everything has to be a bit more agile and um, online and consumer friendly rather than sort of, you know, high street. Fast fashion. Yeah. 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 I mean, fast, fast fashion well, is... Well, the best thing about getting together with me and Gareth is we've managed to, we've right. still cut up fast fashion entirely because we're now shopping in our wardrobes because we have two. Yes! Yeah. yeah. I love when you go Ollie. shopping in your wardrobe. So do you, but you, you're similar size, so you borrow each other's clothes. I, do. Yeah, I, mean, I, I had, I, I, was, I was working as managing director of a company down in uh, the Cotswolds at the time, and Ollie was doing something during the day, and he just messaged me and was like, "Oh, by the way, I've just, I've just popped this jacket on, and I'm just going out. Um, I, I love it. it like, where, um, I, I've never seen it before, and it was a jacket that I bought in a Burberry auction that was worn by Seal on the runway. It was a one-off that I basically would never wear because it was like this priceless item. Well, it's absolutely. And wonderful. I think Ollie was going out to some. Sort delighted. Of... I think I was at the co-op or something, <laughs> having the most wonderful time. <laughs> You're gorgeous, Burberry coat. Delighted. Like, oh my God, do not leave the house in that. Oh, well, I'm I delighted. love that. <laughs> I love that. Can we go back to the proposal? Yeah. Yes. Go on, tell everybody. I know this story, but share it because it's a lovely story. So I had actually been out with Gok the night before and got terribly drunk. Um, oh, and it was friends what story we're telling here. And um, <laughs> we, I came home, we had gone to the casino and I had a... a, a, a I've got a little bit of money, which is quite rare. And I sat there and I was like, this is fantastic. I, I actually won for the first time. And uh, I went, well, to, he says, what do you want to do today? I said, well, what I want to do is I want to go and get the puppy, take the dog for a walk in Hyde Park. But for starters, I want to go and get those really cool Gucci shoes that everyone's got. And he goes, OK, no problem at all. So I went to Gucci and got these fabulous shoes. We had the dog with us. And on the way back, I didn't feel particularly well. And I was like, I think I need to go <laughs> home. We, I, I was obviously planning to repose. And whilst I was like, oh, let's go to the park first. He, he was like, no, 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 I want to go to Gucci first. I want to go. We spent two hours in Gucci. We took the dog in there. And yep. it was like, he was, he was fed up. I, and then we left. I'd got a parking ticket because we were over by about two minutes. Yep. So it wasn't, it was not going the... the, the so, <laughs> so anyway, I ended up going home and about an hour later, I was like, well, he really, the dog really needs a walk. So we did go to Hyde Park and we went to Kensington Park Gardens and we reached the Peter Pan statue. And the Peter Pan statue is really important for me because not only do I write fabulous, so I'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> so, and not only do I, I have lovely memories there, but I also write a bit of fantasy, all that kind of stuff. And so Peter Pan's quite important to me. And then Gareth um, Bear decided not to be very well himself. And uh, and so with a poo bag in hand, uh, I, I did what I had to do. And then and then Gareth decided it was the opportune moment uh, to whisper in my ear, will you marry me? There was no bins. If I had a bag full of my dog's diarrhea. 
and <laughs> and that is that is the real story about how we got engaged. So it was, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, I it see, and that is story. Up. It is the best, you know. It's it's so <laughs> much better than hearing went down on one knee and there were roses everywhere. You had the dog's poo in your hand you... and he whispered in your ear. Yeah, That's... absolutely. He's and still, but also, there were so still, many people around. He still cried. I did cry absolutely because you do because it's quite an emotional moment. But I was like, but it was it was exactly right. It was our anniversary was like April the first, so it's April Fool's Day, and so all, everything we do in our lives is all about comedy and make each other laugh and kind of create those memories that we can sit there and just everything's absurd. Even the idea that we're on a reality show is completely bonkers and ridiculous and such to laugh about, and we do. And so that is just another level of where. And the wedding will be about 15 minutes of serious. The rest will be everyone just having the most wonderful laughs. Everyone, of course, everyone will laugh because, but actually that's what you spread. You just spread joy. I mean, I, I, you know how much I adore you. How are you two coping with all of this? How are you coping with the pandemic and, uh, and being the lockdown and everything? Okay. We're, we're on day about 55 because we, we, we'd gone to the Cheltenham races because a very, very, very close friend of mine uh, puts on a day there and we were going to stay down with them and it's it's actually where we first met and the advice wasn't there that we weren't it was like oh do you go do you not and we were like well we're gonna go but we're in a box and we're gonna stay to the box we're not gonna go anywhere else and uh and so we we, we stuck there but we, what yeah. we, we, my my sister had given birth on the day of Cheltenham and so I went okay let's be very very clever let's not be let's not be stupid at all let's go home and literally self-isolate for two weeks completely to make sure that we are okay so and then we'll go and meet her after that we're, we're on about day 55 uh, lockdown came in on my birthday <laughs> this year and so we've had three celebrate we've had an anniversary Alice being born and your birthday. Uh, birthday and Easter so we've celebrated quite a lot in the house um but we are we're as happy as we can be and we're trying to not drink too much and all the things that everyone's trying to do as we're, well. We're quite lucky because we're quite used to being with each other. So we're, we're around each other quite a lot. And don't get me wrong, like it's, it's not being able to go out and do the normal things. It does heighten sort of stresses a bit. Um, one, of, one of the big things, because when we go and get shopping, we always take everything out, disinfect everything and make sure we're really diligent. And if I'm, Ollie will be like, oh, I just saw you touch that with like your elbow or your finger, and then yeah. suddenly we'll, we'll get quite frustrated yeah, with each get, other. I get in trouble for that. But it's, it, it only like, ever lasts like five minutes, and then we're um, we're back to normal. But you know, we're, we're coping, which is good. But yeah, which is important. And have you yeah. seen Alice? Have you seen her via Zoom or Skype? We haven't met her. We've seen her through yeah, we have met through FaceTime and Skype and all the Zoom and stuff. Yeah, we've we've met her a few times on that, and she's fabulous, and it's it's so lovely, and I think they're coping really well. Um, I mean, they're down in the countryside, my sister and her husband, with a three-year-old, a toddler, and two spaniels. And so I think on day 50 for them as well, they're being a bit like, oh, I think it's time to... It's oh, let's oh. try. Well, the thing is, got <laughs> our, our nephew's nearly... He's three. He's three years old, and I think he's, you know... It, it's, uh, they're all full of energy, aren't really they? understand it, and he's in yeah, it's confusing. He's frustrated. But it's actually a little bit fabulous for, for J uh, James, James the, 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 um, the husband, because um, he would have had to go back to work, so he's managed to have a couple of months with a baby and to be able to support yeah. her, which is heaven, actually. Three months of maternity leave. Although they say you have to, everything in life, you have to look at a slightly bright side somewhere. Yeah, you do. I'm, well, I'm, I'm a great believer in that, I really am. How about Made in Chelsea, though? What's happening with Made in Chelsea? So it's quite interesting that we um, have, so we only did six episodes this series because we had to go into lockdown and that was, that was what happened then. So I think it's going to start again, I believe, in, well, as soon as we can, but I know we generally start in a, the middle of July again. Um, and so I think... It well, I suppose you could do the... lockdown versions though, couldn't you? Because it's reality, as it were. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would rather than take us to a desert island where there's nothing at all and, and we live on a desert island for the next three months. I'd rather do that, really. But you've done um, that. You've done that with Bear Grylls. Well, yeah, we did. Yes. Yeah, with, probably, with food probably, this Probably time. some more luxury. Probably a bit more service than Bear Grylls. Uh, yeah. Some clean water to begin with. I've had <laughs> my stalking crocodile experiences are over. <laughs> <laughs> and um, how about Strictly? Strictly? I, w I don't think I'll be doing Strictly. No? There, you went very quiet. Have you heard something we haven't? No, but I just think both of you should be in Strictly Come Dancing oh, with different God. partners. The only uh, issue I've got with Strictly is that I'm a bit dyslexic. And so however I can write things and I can do my bits and pieces, an editor has to work with me definitely when they get it in the publishers. Um, and yet learning 
routines I find slightly more difficult. <laughs> um, and so, I, although one day maybe, I'd rather do the jungle, I think. But Would you do in, that? At, at some point in life, it would be quite fun to do it. But, but, um, at the but moment, I know I'm, they've asked you that before, because you've told me that. That's why I didn't say anything. So now you're saying it publicly. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I mean I, I, I've had an interview years ago. We did yeah. discuss it. But I remember it was the interview that they had to say you'd have to leave Maiden Chelsea to do it. And that was quite a long time ago. So I think Hugo went and did it back, back then. Um, but it was... Yeah, I, I, again, I might, I'm, who knows? Reality shows are, are fabulous. I want to build myself up in a different way. I think there's other, there's other opportunities in the pipeline as well as Chelsea. So it's really nice to be able to, so I need to, I need to, yeah. We'll see what happens. Give us a clue, future. give us a little clue. Well, there's certainly other shows being talked about and, and I have spent the last however long writing a book, another book, which is really good, which I'll tell which you Which one about. is it? Is this a Laid in Chelsea type book or is this the no. fantasy book? No, this is, this is a, another fantasy, a children's oh, kind of fantasy, but it's more of, a, more of a picture book, this one, but I will tell you more when I can. Oh, fantastic. You two just carry on being as wonderful as you are and looking after each other and thank you so much and give alice a big virtual kiss from all of us at hello i will well. of course I all know right how my much gorgeous I love you. nurses see you thank soon thank you so much well, stay so, safe bye, everyone bye. 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 bye oh so lovely so lovely ollie there lovely ollie look and gareth look his fiance there were things there that i never thought that he'd say and share so funny i'm very lucky to know him in real life and he shared things that he hasn't shared before. So there we go. He said he would like to be in the jungle, uh, as in I'm a celebrity. And he also told the true story of uh, their engagement. All right, let's have a look if Angela Griffin is there. Lovely Angela, who I call a poppet. She is a complete... There she is. Come on in, Angela Griffin. How busy would you like to be, Angela Griffin? Here she comes in now. Hello! I've never done this before. Welcome, welcome to the madness of live Instagramming. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's quite amazing. I was really scared I wasn't gonna be let into the room, that my name wasn't down, I wasn't coming in. Well, um, you're I'm, here and you're wonderful, you yeah. gorgeousness. Now, okay, so we're hearing, they were telling us all sorts of things that they've never actually publicly said before. So who knows what we're gonna get out of you? This is amazing. <laughs> so Angela, how busy would you like to be? Isn't it? Or uh, do you know? Uh, I know. I, I really like being busy, though. I really like it when you know the stress levels are at like 70, 70 percent. Um, I really like being busy. And when we first got locked down, I did start to have a little panic that that was it. They're never ever going to work again. The whole industry is going to disappear. And then somehow um, managed to do two jobs. Well. Uh, you so the, I don't know where to begin because of course we can talk white lines. We yeah. can talk last night's isolation stories and dumb yeah. breeding. Where would you like to start? I'd like to start with dumb breeding. Okay, that's, Tell us, that's, some that's, people cool. might not know about it, and I just think this is. I've seen it. I've watched it on YouTube. It's it's brilliant. It's such fun to make. So basically, it is. Um, there's going to be between eight and ten. Um, uh, 10 minute episodes, all depending on how long we're locked down for. I think Julie Graham, um, uh, the actor who's written it, has got 12 episodes in her head. But obviously, if lockdown gets lifted, then we won't be able to shoot them all. So she's kind of done it in stages. And they're basically short films based around these six women who are of a certain age, between 40 and 50 uh, plus. And so they're going through that second stage of life when the menopause hits, the perimenopause hits, and it, each episode kind of delves into their friendship. No, they've done everything together, these women. They've divorced, they've drank, they've had dinner, they've had babies, they've had rows, they've had everything. And, and each episode, you just get to know more about them. And so far, we've had two episodes out. They go out at three o'clock in the afternoon on YouTube um, on a Thursday, a new episode. So we've had two episodes out so far. But, but we also, make it all ourselves. Exactly. That's the incredible thing, that you've got these producers and, and people, and Julie writing it, Julie Graham. But you've got, there's you, there's Tams in Althwaite. That, I mean, the cast is incredible, but you're doing it yourselves. Yeah, that's it. So we've got, um, yeah, Tracy Ann Oberman, Tams in Althwaite, Alison Newman, Julie Graham, myself, Denise Welsh. So that's the six of us. Um, 
And you know what? We've all managed to get the technical side going. You know, you always think it's a young person's game that, you know, it, like, and fair enough, we have had to call on the kids sometimes to help us with a few of the technical things. But we're all women of a certain age and we've, we've bloody done it. We've done it on our own. And so we, we've got this great um, director. She's called Robin Shepherd, And um, I worked with her on Harlots, which I um, shot uh, like a year ago. And she was the one who gave me the phone call to say, would you, would you come on board? And I was like, yeah, cause she's the, just an incredible director. And so each, each episode, she gives us a shot list. Oh, I should have brought one in. It's a shot list and there's like pictures of like where we're stood and then where we've got to put the cameras and where the cameras have to move to. And we have to work it out. And then we get like my lovely husband, very lovely Jason Milligan. I, you know, obviously can't live without him. He's turned into my, my technician. He's the cameraman, he's moving everything. The girls help me design the rooms because we're obviously shooting it in our house. But we can't, you know, it can't be Angela's house. We've got to try and make it, my character's called Susie. So we go, right, would she, would, like we've got the wine in the background there. Does she drink wine? And like my, my young missy was like, no, I don't think she does drink wine. I think she's someone who drinks beer. So it's like, right, let's move all the wine out of the way. We've got to make sure. And so it's been quite a nice little project with the girls for them to see how something is shot and all the different things that go into shooting a drama or a comedy. You know, it's the makeup, it's the hair, it's the lights, it's the shadows coming in from here, it's the noise, it's, 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 it's a nice little project. And the girls, because the girls want to follow in your footsteps. Yeah, I mean, the, the, my youngest, Missy, really, really does. She just wants to be an actor. That's all she wants, um, it's all she's ever wanted. Tallulah goes through phases, I've got to say. She did want to act and she was, she did um, The Worst Witch for uh, uh, the BBC and Netflix mm. a couple of years ago. And she really enjoyed doing that. But then she was like, no, actually I want to be in a band. Then she wanted to be a neuroscience, no, neurosurgeon. Then she stopped wanting to do that. Um, now she wants to do history. Now she wants to be a director and it's, I mean, you know what? She's 15, nearly 16. This she can, is they, yeah, can, she's got time. I just say to her, you, anything, you can just do anything that you want, anything you put your mind to and, you know, we're there for you, we'll support you. That's um, really important though. Did you have that sort of support when you were going into it? I think so, yeah. My, I, cause, so where I come from, it's like a little council estate in Leeds, not little, massive council estate in Leeds. And there's not that many actors that come out of it. But when I said to my mum, I want to, I want to act. I want to do that. She was like, right. Okay. Brilliant. And she looked into it and she found out how you do it. Oh, you get an agent, right? What's an agent? And she just, wow. she did all that, um, that research. And I got an agent when I was 11, um, because <laughs> she managed to find one. I went to this drama uh, group called Leeds Children's Theatre, which is still going to this day. And uh, one of the boys there, Elm, had an agent and he'd been on the back of um, an Emmerdale tractor. And I was like, mum, that's what I want to do. So we went and asked his mum, Thuja. Thuja, I think that was her name, wow. where to get the agent from. And I got, I got an agent and got, a, um, and I got my first job when I was 13. So what was your very first job then? My very first job was on a children's book show. Um, and each week they would dramatise a book. And um, they dramatised a book called Yates's Rap. And I played Gail. And she was a drummer in a band. It was all about these young kids who wanted to put a band together. And they were like, we're not going to have any girls. We're not going to have this. But I was the only person who could play the drums. And I actually did play the drums. So if I hadn't have taken drum lessons at the end, grand old age of 13, things might not have turned out as they did. But now looking back on everything that you've done, I mean, your mum, so as you were saying, your kids can do anything. Because your mum just was behind you and supported you and said, right, I'll help you with your dreams. Not yes. stage school type mum, just Not solid mum. Yeah, it, and, and, and now when I think about it and I think about how hard it is to get into this industry, I just, I've got so much admiration for her because she never said, you know, the estate that I, that I come from, you know, there was a factory here and there was the school there and there was... There was quite um, a well-trodden path, of a career path for most people on there. And acting really wasn't one, and it just never phased her. There was never a point when I thought it was something I couldn't do. And I was also this little brown person who wanted to be an actor. At that time on TV, there weren't very many people. I, 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 Floella Benjamin, Whoopi Goldberg, there weren't, you know, like a plethora of black actors there. But my mum just never... 
she never went, you can't do it. She went, right, okay, let's see, let's see how we do it. Maybe it's that thing of when you don't know how hard something is, it you doesn't phase you. She didn't realise. But you're like that though, because I've known you a very long time and I don't think I've ever met somebody who's, ju you just have this great outlook and you're like, right, I'm gonna carry on doing it no matter what. Right, You've it's always been like that, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I just, I mean, I've done some some stuff where I, I look back. I, I, I did the red carpet. I went to do the red carpet of the Golden Globes and I got asked to do it about three days before. I hadn't seen any of the films at all. And someone asked me to do it. It was Stuart Murphy at Sky. At I think, Sky. I think Gethin Jones was meant to be doing it on his own. And they were like, do you know what? Actually, I think we might need two people. Angela, do you fancy it? And I went, yeah, yeah, all right then. And three days later, I was on a plane going to, going to LA, live from the red carpet, talking to people about their films that I hadn't seen. And it's only now when I look back and go, what, what, what was I thinking? I, but I just, I like, I like a challenge. Like, would you like to make a, a comedy drama in your own home with Fantastic. no help other than your kids? It's like, yeah, I'll say yes first and then think about how I'm gonna do it later. But that's, I like that. I like that. But now, isolation, isolation stories, of course, this week on ITV, they've been incredible. Yeah. I love them and congratulations as well on being a part of it. Because it seems to be the thing that everybody's talking about. And you, you, how did you make that? Same thing. In, in fairness, that one actually felt easy after I'd been doing dumb breeding. Because dumb breeding, we are, you know, the kit's there and we have to set up all the shots and move them with isolation stories, which it's, it's finished on TV now, but you can yes. still go on iTunes and, and download it and stuff. But, um, oh, yes. but they, um, they delivered all the kit, but we, um, we used Zoom to do the talk. And we had like a, a, a computer which had all the director, the DOP, um, the sound technicians, all those different people were on a Zoom meeting. They gave us these phones and told us where to put them and they could see where we were putting them but they could actually access them remotely. So they could start and stop filming and zoom in and so on on these, on these actual phones. But then when I watched mine back, it just basically, we used the zoom the whole way through. So we, yeah, it, it was, oh no. Is it you? I'm here. You can't hear me. Okay, I can lip read. <laughs> TV shows from your own home and you know very well about this. There we are, we got you back. Oh, oh, it's all very edge of your seat, this, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> yes. Different way of doing telly. There we go. Oh. So, right, yes, we were talking about isolation and they were able to remotely access the the phones that were filming you. The phones that were filming us, yeah, so they could press st uh, stop, record, they could zoom in and zoom out. But then, actually, when they edited it all together, it was all mainly... Um, the Zoom call. So we kind of spent two days <laughs> setting all these cameras up that we didn't actually end up needing in the end. But oh, never mind. Never well, mind. it was wonderful. It was wonderful. So if anybody wants to see it, it's on ITV Hub to catch up on that. And then, well, of course, go on. Sorry. Yeah. I was just going to say, there's also a making of it, which I, which was on really late last night, which I think that's really worth watching as well, just because you get to actually see what went into the making of it. That's it. I've, but, I've actually recorded that and I haven't watched it yet. So oh. I'm being very honest. I haven't watched that. Everyone's Brilliant. saying that they watch them and they love them. Um, okay, so now let's talk about White Lines on Netflix. I mean, excuse me, Netflix. I know. World I know. Views. So tell us about White Lines. White Lines. Wow, what a show. I mean, if there's ever a show that is the antithesis of lockdown, it is White Lines. Um, it is all set in uh, Ibiza. Uh, we shot it over summer and... It's about a group of friends who moved to Ibiza in 1996 from Manchester. And then 20 years later, um, well, 
20 years ago, one of them went missing. And then we jump forward into time and the body of the friend turns up in a desert. And his, his sister, who's played by the wonderful, beautiful, amazing actress, Laura Haddock, um, decides to go to Ibiza to try and find out what happened to her brother all those years ago. Um, and I play the character of Anna, and she was one of the original friends that went over in 1996. Um, and she was married to um, Marcus, who's played by Danny Mays. Oh, we love and, Danny. Danny yeah. Mays fan club between us, aren't we? Oh. I mean, he's everywhere at the moment as well. He's, uh, we watched 1917 the other, and he pops up on there. He's such an incredible actor. Such a lovely, lovely, lovely mm -hmm. person. And possibly one of the best actors I've ever worked with. Doing scenes with him, it was like a masterclass and it made you want to be as good as him. It made you, like, it made me go, oh, God, right, I've really got to concentrate now. But he doesn't kind of, like sometimes you have really brilliant actors, but they're a pain in the bum. You know, the way that they get to be brilliant is by being a pain. Danny's like having a laugh between sh between takes. He's so funny. And then it like action comes and he's there and he is there and he's so committed and he's so brave with his choices. He's just, he's, it, I, I, that was one of the highlights for me of, um, of my whole career was getting to, wow. to, to, do, to do work with him, genuinely. Well, it sounds a fantastic show. I mean, he's very excited about it as well. And it sounds it like exactly incredible. what we all need to escape all of this. It's, it's, you know, it's Netflix. There's a budget. And you can see exactly where the budget has gone. I mean, we were filming in houses on tops of cliffs. You know, there's just these huge, epic, epic shots, epic scenes. In the first episode, when you're introduced to my character, Anna... Um, she uh, runs sex parties, very high class sex parties. And in the first episode, we, we meet her at one of her parties and it was shot in this like 60 million euro uh, villa with the most gorgeous people. And, you know, everyone's getting very close. There's no social distancing in white yes. life, none. And if, if it does really well and we do get to do another show, I mean, I just, I just don't know how we would be able to do it with any Well, there are rumours that it's happening again. So I presume it might oh. be a bit later well, that you film. Well, it'd have to be really late. I mean, obviously it would depend on what's going on with this situation. The way Netflix works though, until the show goes out, until they get all their data, um, no uh, actual decisions are made, so. I Hopefully. can't wait to see it. I've heard so much about it from you and Danny. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about now, and the, um, you and uh, Jason and the kids, how are you all coping with it? Or you seem lots of guitar playing. Oh, gosh, honestly, we made Tallulah give us an actual concert last night. We're trying to make events in our household. So last night was um, uh, entertainment by Tallulah Milligan, who just astounds me with her talent you know i think you sometimes make your kids do stuff that you wish that you'd done and i always used to be really jealous of those people who would just get up at a party and get the guitar out and so we kind of made her play the guitar but it does mean we can literally wheel her out now and go Aww. okay entertainers and she's got such a lovely voice such a lovely voice the other night um we had cinema night um and my youngest missy made a credit card machine credit cards uh, menus, she made all the popcorn, I mean, the, she made herself a hat, uh, the whole thing, and we all had to go in and buy our tickets for the, <laughs> put it in the credit card machine. Oh, it was so sweet, and then we turned all the lights off, and it and it sold gin and tonic, which was excellent. And we watched 1917, and we turned out all the lights, and it was just, we're trying to make events. We're talking about having a quarantine Christmas and possibly buying each other a present each and putting up the tree and doing roast turkey. What, you mean now? Not, not waiting till December? Oh, no, 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 now. Like, just making it like it's Christmas Day um, to try and make an event out of another day. Because otherwise, they just roll into one. And anything that makes them creative, anything that takes them out of the fact that, you know, these scary things are going on outside. And so we want to kind of make it not as scary inside.
That sounds fantastic. So just remind everybody where they can see all of these amazing shows, okay. please. Okay, then. So uh, in reverse or order, uh, you've got White Lines, which is starting next Friday, uh, May 15th on uh, Netflix, everywhere, uh, worldwide. And then you've got Isolation Stories, which you can find on the ITV Hub with the making of, and that's there now. And then you've got Dumb Breeding, which is um, on YouTube uh, at three o'clock on Thursdays. Uh, a new episode comes out, but you can go there now and catch up on the first two episodes. Which are brilliant. Oh, Angela, I'm going to say it again. Every time I see you, I think you're a puppet. You really are. And not only that, not only do I think you're a lovely person, but I think you are such a wonderful actress. And long may you reign. Let's have some cocktails when all this ends. Yes, let's have, let's have daytime cocktails. Well, I've got an idea because Melissa Hensley's on next. So, yeah, because she's always, she does this show with me every week. So when this is all over, I think we need to do a big party for all of the NHS, all the frontline people. We get Tallulah playing the guitar, right? And we Michigan get Melissa Hensley tickets. doing the food. And <laughs> Hello Magazine can cover the whole thing. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm there. Take care, my lovely. Bye. Bye. Stay safe. Bye. Oh, lovely Angela. You see, how lovely, how lucky am I to do this every Friday night to do this show? I am, I hope you're enjoying it because I'm just loving chatting to all of these people. So Melissa Hemsley, along with, of course, Henry. We can't do the show without Henry. Uh, Henry is her taste tester. Uh, but he's not just her taste tester. Hello, my lovely! Yay! You've had I'm... a busy day. Oh, yes. And I'm very up for this uh, party with Angela and, and the gang. I think that we do it to say thank you to everybody for their hard work. Uh, lovely to see you again. You've had a busy day because of VE Day. I know you were doing uh, you were doing something today live on YouTube. And of course, you've been working with the Felix Project, an amazing charity. You You have been so busy. Gabby, I'm so pleased that you've been um, watching what I've been up to this week. I've been watching you too. <laughs> so actually, just yeah. briefly tell people, before you tell us the snack attack, tell us about the Felix Project, because it's an incredible project. Oh, uh, Felix Project is inc incredible, as you say. They, they rescue good food that's otherwise going to go to the bin, which is just tragic. And then they're very, very organised, and they just make sure that it goes exactly where it needs to go to the people that need it the most. So... Uh, you know, two months ago, it was always going to summer schools, uh, churches, uh, religious centres, community centres, hospitals, just helping people, the most vulnerable. And now, obviously, they've really, really um, got to work with their distribution centres. They're just sending out all this food, and it's food that would otherwise go to waste. So it's a double plus, and um, they've been working so hard. So I did, as, as you just mentioned, uh, a cook-along yesterday, and People donated and it was brilliant. We raised a, a lot. And people, because there's so much to donate to at the moment and lots of us might be, you know, it might be very difficult. We might want to donate but can't. So it was really lovely. Every well little help. Done. Well done. Okay, so you and Henry, what have you got in store for us this week, please? Henry, show everyone your chain, though. Lovely. Have you been watching Normal People, Gabby? Oh, it's beautiful. Have you seen that? But, but I've, I've made Henry, I went into my, um, my little chain, I've got a little box of chains. I, I mean, I have two, but uh, I made Henry wear one, so I'm just laughing about it. Because he's still got it on. I can't wait, let's have a look. We can't see it, Henry. Oh. Lovely. Thank you very much for sharing your chain, Henry. It's a really personal thing to do, isn't it? So, inspired by, inspired by your gorgeous guest this week, as I always am inspired by your guest. I have got one sweet, one savoury. Come over here, Henry. Here I am making, with buckwheat flour, I've made about a million, little buckwheat bellinis. Uh, Gabby, they're gluten-free. They're using buckwheat flour. It's, it's not a wheat, so it's all good and very easy to get. I've made different sizes. I'm going to have those tomorrow for branching. How do you make, how do you make a, what, how, what is it? Just buckwheat with what? Absolutely. So it looks like this. It's buckwheat flour, um, an egg, a little bit of baking powder, and then I had like, you know when you go through your cupboards and you just find things? I had this little mix of seeds, I popped that in and some salt and pepper, left it for a bit, and then it becomes like a pancake mix. Come over here, Henry. And then I've just got it here like this, can you see that? And I've just popped it down there with a little, tiny bit of oil, and I just fry them, and you can make them any shape you want. These ones, they've bubbled, so they're good to go. That's a bit of an imperfect one, but I love it all the same. And you can make them crispy and use them as sort of like 
sort of like a, a sort of crackery thing to dip into hummus and so on, or come over here. I got sent this most beautiful smoked uh, salmon uh, pate. I love my smoked fish. And uh, they've been uh, following a, a recipe since time began. So I, you can just put your pate onto it. Uh, I could make a lovely wedding starter, you know? Oh, for Ollie and Gary. Yeah. Like oh, this. And then if you don't eat fish or, you know, you know, a little bit of this pea dip. This is, I made this pea dip earlier on today for the British Legion. You know, waste not, what not and all that. Bit of celery topping here. Bit of, bit of tomato and olive over here, perhaps. You know, all sorts of toppings. I know, oh, where are I? <laughs> Hello. Um, whatever you like. And it just looks really smart uh, to make. And you can make them all ahead. Could you sit down for me, please, Henry? There you go. Oh look, and, oh, look, you've got both. You've got one there with the smoked salmon and the pea together. Yeah, absolutely. And so I'm gonna just have, Henry and I are gonna have this with a drink later. Um, and they just are brilliant. And as I say, the bigger ones, has anyone ever made these, but with blinis? And for the bigger ones, we can just sort of stack them and, you know, maybe have some eggs with them tomorrow or uh, you, can, you can maybe put some cinnamon in. I know you love your cinnamon and you could put some berries on top or banana and they just, really really lovely and a great way to use up a flour that you might have bought you know earlier in the year and now you're like i don't know what to do with it how long can you keep those for though well once you've made them how long would they last i keep them in a sort of old biscuit or tea tin for about four to five days but i'll probably eat them all but if you ever wanted to refresh them just pop them in the oven and get them all crispy again and lovely honestly we've just been i actually had to take them away from him we were chomping on them while we well, were we enjoying them henry, henry has to give oh, us the taste which one are you gonna have henry, henry? I think we should have... go for the double decker one. This one. He's, got, he's going in. Okay, go Henry. On. Get that in. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, it looks so nice. Okay. Oh, the whole thing. What? That's it. Can mm. we get a thumbs up? So yes. good. Yeah. Thank you, Henry. Delicious. With your chain really on. <laughs> he says it's delicious. Thank you very much, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect for Ollie and Gary. Thank goodness. Right, oh, no, I, I mean, I was thinking. What Angela might like, and I had a little looking at Angela's feed and her beautiful family, and they look great fun, and she's been baking, and I love how she said some things have gone wrong and some things have gone right, and I thought to myself, it's very hot today, and it's going to get hotter this weekend. What can we do that's very relaxed? So I've got this is about as relaxed as it gets. I think you know sometimes I I, I am very lazy when it comes to snacks. I've got dates, really really lovely dates, and dates obviously are delicious by themselves, but if you just break them open. Make a little space. Um, grab some cheese. I've got some red Leicester. Did you know it's the British cheese weekend this weekend? It's the no, British cheese weekend. So lots of people, um, the British um, cheese industry is really is really suffering at the moment, as lots of people are. And so they're celebrating this weekend by, you know, buying British cheese. So really enjoying our lovely cheddars and Leicesters and Stiltons. So I've got my cheese and I'm just going to break it. I mean, it's as easy as it gets. And I've put it on there. I might go fancy and put a little pistachio. But I mean, I know that sounds nuts. Dates, well, cheese, and pistachio. Oh, yeah. Ah. yeah. You're brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, or you, could, you could put a walnut. You could put an almond. I've still forgotten how I'm supposed to say almond, almond or almond. But yes, nuts, <laughs> date, and cheese. Are you going in, Henry? But I would never have thought of dates and cheese is it just me i would never have thought of them together has anyone else ever done that you know what another thing you could do um if you want to if it wasn't such a hot day i mean i'm sweating now it is uh, a bit of goat's cheese or feta gabby and uh then you could put it in a little drizzle of balsamic vinegar and you could pop it in the oven or you can slightly sort of pan fry it and it just goes ridiculous i mean think of a cheese board you know a cheese board you love apples chutneys grapes I saw this. Someone made it for me once. They just literally, for pudding, put out cheese and a date. And I was like, oh. And then I thought that hit the spot. So I hope Angela would like that when we all gather together for a party. What someone said, dates and figs. Oh, glorious. Like figs and cheese. Well, Are you going to try that, Gabby? I've just thought this is also perfect for Ollie and Gareth's wedding because you could have those on the table for people to I, pick up. Shall I just do the catering? Will you put me forward for the catering? <laughs> I think that's what you should be doing. I think, in fact, I think anything that anybody has, you should be doing it. So Henry didn't give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. We need to Henry, see. what's the burden? It was a 10 out of 10. Oh, I'm still, see. it's still in my mouth and it's still amazing. Here's the thing, can I tell you, I have a problem with dates because once I start, I just can't stop. 
Exactly. Well, we've got a whole, a whole top of them here for you, Gabby. Well, that's great because you're there and I'm here and we can't see each other. But I will imagine that you've saved I'll some. I'll save some for you. Thank you very much. Very kind of you, Henry. Um, uh, <laughs> Melissa, just see. Come on, back oh, up there. Sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry. Melissa, when this is uh, done, will you uh, put the recipes up, please, on your on your feed? Definitely, Gabby. I'd love to. Bless and you. Gabby, your, your dress is beautiful. Oh, well, it's shopping in your wardrobe as usual, but it's also for VE Day and Dress Up Friday. So we thought we'd have a, have a triple whammy today. Uh, thank you, as always. Love you, Gabby. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much, Melissa Hensley. And, of course, lovely Henry as well. She's so lovely. Anyway, thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. We will be here next Friday. And so far, I think I can probably tell you. Well, I can. Why not? Anita Rani will be joining me. And we think maybe... Alex Jones Thompson. Uh, so, and of course, Melissa Hensley. She's here every Friday with her snack attacks. Thank you very much, as usual, to Hello Magazine. And uh, have a lovely weekend. And don't forget, nine o'clock, the Queen and her speech. Uh, we will be tuning into that. Anyway, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. And please stay safe, take care, and we'll see you next Friday at six o'clock. Bye bye. <laughs>